people started to realize this was uh, turning into a very volatile situation. Uh, when we started seeing fireworks going off and hot tubs brought in, this was very much, uh, I think their intention was to go in and have uh, them with these uh, vulgar flags and swastikas and Confederate flags and so on swirling all over the place with the backdrop of Parliament Hill like they'd taken over the country. We did see unity on the front lines with OPP, Municipal Police Services, and Ottawa Police and RCMP. And as I said, they did what I consider a textbook case of cleaning up a really, really uh, terrible situation. Mr. Watson, why do you keep talking about incidents that you only see on the media and not by yourself? Mr. Watson, why did you vote against a motion to pursue the Emergencies Act, but then welcome it a week later? Why did you vote against that at council? Hey folks, William Diaz here in Ottawa for the fourth day of the Emergencies Act inquiry here that's happening since Justin Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act on peaceful protesters during the Freedom Convoy back in February. So today I'm here to ask Keith Wilson, the lawyer for the convoy organizer, some question about the testimonies, the bizarre testimony we heard from Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson today. Let's check it out. You know, we saw earlier Jim Watson said that uh, the protesters had you know, not, uh, we're, we're incapable of discussing rationally, of negotiating rationally. What do you have to say to that? Because I saw that you were able to have, you know, courteous text messages with the city of Ottawa during the convoy, and even some truckers were willing to move their trucks to Wellington Street. What do you have to say to his claims that the truckers weren't willing to negotiate rationally? Well, it was pretty clear that what the mayor was doing this morning was using every opportunity he could to say bad things about the protesters. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said was that they're an irrational group and you couldn't negotiate with them. Where, in fact, we did negotiate with the mayor. Yeah. And he acknowledged that uh, the agreement was successful. He acknowledged that over 100 vehicles left the downtown and several blocks were cleared. Mm -hmm. um, and he acknowledged that the, the uh, truckers had uh, up, upheld their end of the bargain. So I think it's pretty clear when you look at the repeated derogatory phrases that the mayor used. I think he's trying to help the Prime Minister out. I don't know what promises the Prime Minister has made mm -hmm. to Mayor Watson, as who you know is not seeking re-election and yeah. will be uh, on the job market soon. So uh, I don't think the Commissioner's buying it. I think uh, the, the evidence yesterday from the city officials mm -hmm. about the um, goodwill nature uh, the credibility that the truckers and their representatives had in the negotiations and in the dialogue with the city officials right. uh, I think is going to prevail in the end. I think what we're seeing here is just political posturing, the mayor trying to uh, win favor with the prime minister and uh, do his best to slight uh, Canadians who came here to protest for their freedoms. Yeah, and you know, talking about political past and political biases, you know, earlier we saw Brendan Miller try to, you know, find out what the political past of Jim Watson was. He talked about federal politics, about provincial politics, about mayoral politics. Can you explain what was the point of uh, this line of questioning? Well, I think it was to emphasize that, that the mayor is and always has been a political player. You know, he, uh, he's the former minister of, of housing and municipally related matters here in the province of Ontario. That's something I didn't know until today. Um, he's uh, been an active member of the Liberal Party. Um, so, you know, he's played politics all his life and he was playing politics in the hearing room again today. Mm -hmm. And he said that he didn't politic politicize the protest when Brendan Miller asked him if he agreed that he politicized the protest. Do you agree with uh, Miller's assessment that he did politicize the Freedom Convoy? Well, I, again, look at what he's doing today. He's completely contradicting the evidence of his city officials, his own chief of staff, the city manager, in terms of how they described their dealings with the uh, with the freedom protesters and their representatives and they described them in a very positive way and they explained how they honored the deal to de-escalate and but for the intervention of the federal government and the police stopping uh, the movement of trucks out of the downtown area uh, the protest would have been largely consolidated to Wellington by the Wednesday of the same week that the federal government and the Prime Minister decided to invoke the Emergencies Act. Yeah. And finally, one last thing, you know, you said that the testimonies that 
happened yesterday don't corroborate with the testimony fully that happened today uh, I receive I keep receiving a lot of messages about hearsay and you know lies that are being told to commission um, wh why do you think we're seeing so much hearsay and what can council do how, how much do you think is gonna have an impact on the result of the commission well you know we have a very seasoned judge who, who is the commissioner mm -hmm. he's a a, a a justice of the Ontario Court of Appeal he has 20 years of experience of being a judge and adjudicating matters. I think he has a keen eye and a keen ear, and he will seek to sift out the real evidence from the political posturing. Yeah. And, and, and because it's a commission inquiry, the formal rules of evidence don't apply, so hearsay evidence is allowed. But what a decision maker does in that circumstance is it goes to weight. How much weight do they give that evidence? and uh, uh, we'll have to see. If you want to help us fund our trip here in Ottawa, you can always head on to truckercommission.com and chip in as much as you can to help us pay for food, travel, expenses, and our Airbnb that we use as a studio here in Ottawa.